If you live in Alaska and come across a dead animal, you call Kathy Burek. That should keep that stuff safe from any goo. This is my knee preps gear, free stinkified gear, back brace, knee pads, sample kit. All right, we'll just load it up. Kathy is one of three veterinary pathologists in all of Alaska. She's hired by various local and federal agencies to examine the carcasses of wild animals. All right, that should do it. That means she's the person who sounds the alarm when animal populations unexpectedly decline because of things like climate change. What we do is try to figure out why animals die. I work with a lot of different wildlife species up here. Humpbacks, fin whales, beluga whales, polar bears. Kathy has studied hundreds of animal deaths. But in recent years, she's noticed things that are hard to ignore. There are indications that we are seeing uh, changes in the environment. With climate change, there's several things that can happen that can cause increased disease incidences in different places. You have animals moving, you have vectors moving, and disease agents being able to survive better in the environment. In 2015, for instance, Kathy recorded a worrisome trend. Sea otters were dying at five times the rate they normally do. And her research showed that the increase was linked to unusually warm water. Alaska isn't the only place experiencing an uptick in animal deaths. Mass animal die-offs have been on the rise everywhere from the Great Barrier Reef to the Siberian tundra. Last year in the Russian Arctic, scientists linked an anthrax outbreak to a pathogen released from rapidly thawing ice. It infected thousands of reindeer, which people rely on for food, and caused the death of at least one boy. Investigations like the ones that Kathy performs played a key role in figuring out what happened. So the hazards are that you're dealing with a lot of sharp instruments. The other hazard for people that haven't been around dead animals is uh, fainting. You know, it's kind of a normal human reaction when you see the innards of things and things smell a little bit not so good. Some people pass out. Yay, it's there. We got an animal. The biggest thing that people misunderstand about my job is that they've been watching too much CSI or Quincy or Bones, and you know they'll expect that we're going to get an answer like an hour. And these things take a while. Sometimes you don't figure out the absolute answer. I'll have to see what the blubber thickness is, but you can also see the shoulders, shoulder bones very prominently. So maybe it's some adult male. Kathy is careful not to attribute everything she's seeing to climate change. She approaches every carcass with an open mind. All right, so I think the next thing is to try to roll them. All right, so it is a boy. Yep. So, as with any dead animal, the samples she takes from the sea lion will get tested for bacteria, viruses, and contaminants. That data will, in turn, help authorities and scientists keep track of local, and in some cases, global trends. Look at how, how little fat there is here. It's just crazy. We don't know the absolute cause of death at this point. So now we got to do uh, sampling. It's difficult to talk about how climate change is going to affect or is affecting particular species. We'll just do like a bag and a tag. But we hope that by pulling together all these little individual cases, we can eventually have a bigger picture we can talk about. All right, I'm done. That big picture isn't just important for maintaining animal populations. Toss in the liver. And Kathy knows that. Every time she approaches a carcass, she keeps an eye out for diseases that could infect humans, too. I think people should care about what's going on with wildlife species because they can be an indicator of what's going on in the environment and it can reflect on what might potentially happen to us.